My name is uh, Dale Davis. I'm with Colorado Western Title, and this is Ben Dorlin with Your Castle Realty. And Hello. hey, Ben, we have decided to put together a series of videos to talk about short sales. And what we would like is any feedback that you have for us, how we can make this better, information that you'd like us to include, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like. That would be helpful. We wrote down some stuff that we thought would be important to you, and um, we'll have our emails available. And if you can just let us know how we can be better, we'd appreciate it. Thanks for coming, Ben. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I guess we can start off real basic, and if you would explain what is a short sale. Yeah, Dale, that's that's a it's a big topic right now out there and, and a short sale is essentially where a lender is going to accept a payoff that, that's less than what's owed on the current mortgage. So a good example of that is where a homeowner, say five years ago, bought a house for two hundred thousand dollars and in with current conditions the house wouldn't sell for anywhere near that. Let's say it would sell for around hundred and fifty thousand. Well, if you can go to the bank and you can go negotiate an amount of 150000 with them, they'll accept that short payoff as a full um, payoff for the loan. So you're going to have $50,000 off the loan, and the um, actual homeowner can walk away from the property without owing the rest of that money. In Colorado, we have the Colorado Foreclosure Protection Act. Can you talk a little bit about what that is? Yeah, the Colorado Foreclosure Protection Act was adopted a couple of years ago. Um, it, it is essentially a document that was created to protect homeowners during this pre-foreclosure process. Um, without getting too detailed and into too many details on this, um, it defines who everyone is and, and basically gives timelines and guidelines for all the interested parties that are involved in this process. So it'll tell, it explains who an equity purchaser is, it explains the timeline of when the actual pre-foreclosure starts, and what the rules are of the buyer and the seller in this process. Um, there's also a right of cancellation in the Colorado Foreclosure Protection Act, and it also has something what is called a, a consultant that they define in there as well. And a lot of times a consultant is a lawyer or a real estate agent, or a mortgage broker, and those people are exempted under the Colorado Foreclosure Protection Act because they're actually working with the homeowner to help protect them and guide them along this process. When does the foreclosure process begin? The actual foreclosure process starts when the notice of election and demand is um, given by the public trustee of the county that the house is in. So um, it's also called an NED. Um, so that is the official start date of a pre-foreclosure or the foreclosure process. And in Colorado, you have approximately 110 days to figure out a short sale or get it worked out with the bank. That's not necessarily the only amount of time you have. You can actually extend that sale date for up to a year in, under Colorado Foreclosure Protection Act. But that would be, um, you'd need to negotiate that with the bank and, um, and obviously the public trustee would need to be notified of that. Ben, under what circumstances will a lender entertain a short sale? Well, that's a great question, Dale. Um, there are a few things that are pretty much a must when a lender considers uh, a short sale. One of those conditions must be that the property is, is worth less than what is owed. Obviously, if we go back to our example of the house that's worth 200000 if in today's market it's only worth 150, it's a great example of someone a uh, property that has lost value and now it's only worth 150 as opposed to 200. The second must be that there must be a, a financial hardship within the home. So, um, say uh, there's medical or if a job loss or um, relocation, those are good examples of financial hardships. Um, the Buyer or the um, homeowner must be either behind in payments or payments missing payments is imminent. So they're basically right on the edge of missing payments or they're already behind. And then um, you also must uh, fill out a financial worksheet and show that your bills are much more than what is owed, uh, what you can actually pay and, and 
Um, that's about it. Ben, why would a lender accept a short sale as opposed to going through with what we're all familiar with, a foreclosure? Essentially, the answer is that the banks actually do save money by going through with the short sale. It's uh, very costly and very expensive to go through all the attorneys, have the property sale out of foreclosure sale, and then take over that asset and try to sell the asset on the back end. So if they can get rid of a lot of that process and go through a short sale on the front end, they're saving money and they're getting the homeowner out of foreclosure. What financial recourses do lenders have against homeowners that sell their home in a short sale? Yeah, Dale, if, if the lender discharges the debt, um, there is going to be a, a 1099-C, which is issued by the lender. And essentially, that's if we go back to our example of the $200,000 home and they sell it for $150,000 at short sale, there's $50,000 that the lender is going to send them a 1099 on. Um, I know that sounds pretty daunting, but there are some laws out there and regulations that you can, as a homeowner, can go back with a, a tax professional and work those I issues out. So my advice is to go talk to a tax professional on that. And then the second is a deficiency judgment. A deficiency judgment means that um, you can have a deficiency judgment of the $50,000 in our example, and the bank um, can go after you for that $50,000, but usually what happens in a short sale is you want that deficiency judgment written off. So at the closing table, you'll get a signed document that says they cannot come back at you for that deficiency. That's a very important part of the short sale process. You can get rid of that $50,000 debt, and you still have to deal with the 1099, However, that ten, uh, the deficiency judgment is written off. So that's a good thing for homeowners. All right. Well, thank you, Ben. Um, hopefully, this has been helpful. Um, as we said at the beginning of the segment, we would like your feedback on information that you would like us to include in future videos. And you can contact us at the email addresses that are on your screen. Colorado Western Title does have a short sale department that is dedicated to handling nothing but short sales. Um, ben, you also have some resources that are available to folks. You've written a book here. Um, yeah, actually, um, we do have, I do have a new book out. It's uh, the 2011 Guide to Colorado Real Estate Investing. And although this is um, related to real estate investing, a couple of the chapters that are in there on short sales are both very helpful for homeowners and real estate agents alike. So if you do have questions, please contact me and I can get you a copy of the book or we can sit down and, and talk about what's in it. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Ben. All right, have a good day. See you next time.